We have documents that show that governments pay people to experiment on people against their wishes. Well, not against their wishes, without even telling them. So, and, and we have all this information going back to 1976. Everything was known by 1976. Everything. We needed no more proof, no more research, nothing was needed. In. You see, when, when in, with the industry or a government says, wow, this could be quite a problem, we will carry out research. What they're actually saying is, we really know what it's going to do, but what we will do, we will run some research. That gives us another 15 years. So we will come back in 15 years' time, and then they've bought themselves another 15 years. Mm. And if it's like the last research, <clears throat> so many countries disagreed over the statistical analyses of what was going on that the whole experiment, the worldwide experiment, was considered null and void. So once they, they brought in the statisticians, the whole of this experiment that lasted 10 years, or not, if not 15 years, was just wiped out successfully. OK, Barry, so we know that microwaves damage children. What are the effects on developing babies and on embryos? Embryos are a special case uh, for two reasons. One is that they are the smallest type of human being. And with microwave irradiation, generally for the communication system, the smaller you are, the more radiation you absorb because the nearer you are to the size of the aerial that would receive it. And the embryo is specifically the size that can absorb quite a lot of the radiation. <clears throat> that is the first thing. The second is, <clears throat> excuse me, the second is, uh, and I'm going to use an analogy here, uh, because I think it, it points out uh, what the real problem is. If you could imagine, I'm going to talk about the embryo's brain. If you could imagine <clears throat> leaving here and going back to your house and picking up a magic telephone book that had the telephone numbers of every single person in Germany. Now imagine you pick up a telephone book of every single person in the world with their cell phones, home phones, every office phones, every single person in the world. And then imagine you could push a button and all of these telephones would be dialed at the same time. That is roughly the number of connections going on in an embryo's brain every single second, that number. Wow. It is a phenomenal, it is a phenomenal amount of connections with the most incredible accuracy. And if you then imagine, if that's just the brain, what about the spinal cord and all of the organs? Now, <clears throat> if you expose an embryo to microwave irradiation, what you are doing is you are giving the brain thousands of millions of minuscule electric shocks every single second. So if a pregnant lady uses a cell phone, the microwaves are going into the body, they will travel through the body, straight through the embryo, and if it's an ordinary cell phone, you would have roughly 1,800 million electric shocks a second, every second, going through the embryo. So they are a very special case, and the world should really take note that embryos, whatever happens, must be protected from microwave 
irradiation. And what is, <coughs> what is a safe dose for an embryo to absorb? There is no safe dose of microwave irradiation for any child anywhere in the world. No safe dose at all. Not one. There is no safe dose. Um, it, it's a bit like, theoretically, passing a cigarette in to the womb and saying, have a smoke. Uh, you know, it yeah. is that dangerous. So what laws do the governments and the mobile phone industry hide behind? What usually happens, um, if they want to come and put a transmitter outside your house or on the corner of your road or somewhere, they will usually come along, they will usually say, we follow the ICNIRP guidelines, which is the International Commission for Non-Ionising Radiation Protection. They say, we are well within the ICNIRP guidelines, uh, we are well within the law, there is nothing you can do about this, zonk, there it is, live with it. <clears throat> But in fact, they are lying. Uh -huh. They are lying. Uh, I have travelled all over the UK and all over the world. And I have never yet met a single decision maker that has read the international certificate. Not one. And yet, they will decide planning issues... You can see hospitals with transmitters above the maternity ward. Yes. Um, I've never met a single person that has read it. <clears throat> well, I have. And on page 546, it specifically says that decision makers should take special account of children, the elderly, the sick, it says that some people may be especially sensitive to microwave irradiation. So before any transmitter goes up, what they should really do is a survey of the area to find out how many children there are, how many pregnant ladies, how many elderly, how many sick, to find out whether they're going to affect them. And on the next page... <clears throat> It specifically says that decision makers should read current scientific literature, up to date scientific literature, and they should set an exposure standard which is below the threshold currently known to be causing illness from microwaves. What they will do is they will come along and they'll say, and I can guarantee what they have said, they will say, these are radio waves, there's no problem, we've had radio for years, we're well within the ICNERP guidelines, zonk. <clears throat> and that is a lie. That is a lie. What they should show is evidence of looking at the population, evidence of reading, and why they set the level that they have set, but they don't. They set the maximum level, which is allowable within the International Commission's guidelines, and all of them are set, usually, to the maximum, the maximum guidelines. Whereas, in fact, they should set a minuscule level if they have read the papers. And they should search, they should show evidence of reading, you're a, you're a doctor. Yeah. Um, if I came to you and said, show me evidence of your research, you would show research papers, books, writings, calculations, um, and convince me that you knew what you were doing. And, and this is what the planners would do. And if they have lied, then there may be a good legal argument for having this transmitter taken down. It's, it's entirely obscene that they put these things on hospital roofs when the ICNERP says the elderly and the sick <clears throat> can be affected they I, tend to target uh, and if you look at this people will say I'm wrong but I don't believe I am 
Um, have a look where most of the transmitters are. They tend to be in areas where people need money. They will choose the poor areas around cities because they know that poor people do not have the means to take on the most powerful industry on the planet and fight them. Mm. Hospitals are desperate for cash because the government keeps them poor. So they go on hospital roofs. Schools are even more desperate for cash because the government keeps them poor. So you will get them in school playgrounds because the industry will come along and say, this is safe, there are only radio waves, here's a nice check, zonk. Colleges will have them on the roof because they're poor. Universities will have them by the hundred because universities are desperately poor. <clears throat> so have a look and you will find that most of the transmitters are in areas where people are poor. You will be very hard pressed to find one in a wealthy person's garden. What I wanted to ask you, Barry, was who drew up ICNAP and do they have any connections with the mobile phone industry? There is a large body of government scientists and if you look at the list it's been published it is there is a large body of the same scientists that sit on our government advisory panel the international commission panel the world health organization panel so it is largely the same scientists and they have very bomb proof qualifications <clears throat> and when you have a sir professor standing up saying I do not believe there is proof for this that is all the councils need yes. you know, compared to somebody like me um, that is all the councils need and they will say well we'll go with sir professor um, but you will find it has been published but you will find the same names appearing on the same lists. Thank you. So from a legal point of view, is there any way that people can have transmitters removed? Have you had any successes with having transmitters removed? We have had successes with having them moved, uh, and there are several legal arguments here, and I'm not trained in law, so... I'm assuming that what I say is, is correct. There are a few legal arguments. <clears throat> Some of the decision makers say to the populations that they are not required to consider health in planning decisions, especially the UK. That contravenes the European law. There are two European laws which say health must be considered and it must be a major consideration. Mm 